Luke was very, very excited. The reason he was excited was two reasons. First of all, it was because his uncle Pete was coming to stay and he knew that his uncle Pete was a Christian and therefore though Jesus, he was good fun to be with. And secondly, his uncle Pete was a bit of a magician and he used to do magic tricks. And he always did a magic trick for Luke. And so Luke sat at home in his front room waiting for his uncle Pete to come. Car holds up outside, he looks at the window, sees it, it's Uncle Pete. Uncle Pete comes into the house and uh, chats to Luke's mum and dad for a little bit and then comes into the front room and says to Luke, Hiya Luke! And Luke goes, Hiya Uncle Pete! How are you doing Luke? Okay thanks, are you being good? Well I'm trying to be good, that's great he said. Um, Uncle Pete, do you have any magic tricks for you this weekend? And he said, well he said, over there on that table there's that little red tin. He said, yeah. He said, have a look inside. So Luke went over got the little red tin, took the lid off, which was quite a big lid because it covered the whole thing, and he had a look inside, he couldn't see anything in there, and there wasn't anything in there either. So he said, all oh, right, there's nothing in there. And his uncle Pete said, did you see the pieces of rope? And he said, no, there's no, there's no rope in there. So his uncle Pete, so Luke got the tin and put it back on the side, and his uncle Pete said, well, that's strange, because I thought there was some rope. And boys and girls, his uncle Pete clicked his fingers, took the lid off, and then inside, there in actual fact were some ropes. And, and Luke went, wow, that is incredible. I wonder how you do that. And he said, well, look, inside of here, actually, this isn't one bit of rope. He said, it's one. And he untied this piece. He said, there's a small piece. And then there's a, another piece, which is a long piece. And then there is another piece, which is an in-between piece. And he said to him, Luke, watch. Because you see, sometimes... We think that if we think things that are naughty, it's not so bad. And some people think that if they think something naughty, it's not that important because people can't see what you think. Uh, but then sadly, he said, what happens then is that the things that we think very often will become things that we say. And some people will think that, well, to think something is not so bad, but to say something is a little bit worse. But then to do something wrong is even worse. And he said, look, so we got things that we think that are wrong, Things that we say that are wrong, things that we do that are wrong. <coughs> and, God is a, and some people, look, watch these here. One, two, three pieces of rope. And then he went to guess, he said, Luke, blow on them. Luke went, <sighs> and he said, but do you know what? He said, in God's eyes, the things that we think, the things that we say, and the things that we do are actually, in God's eyes, all exactly the same. Because they're all wrong. Whether we think something, whether we say something, or whether we do something that's wrong, in God's eyes, they're wrong. And Luke went, that's incredible. He said, so what you're saying then is that the things that we think, the things that we say, and the things that we do, because they're wrong, they're all wrong to God. And he said, yeah, that's right, they're all exactly the same to God. And Luke said, oh, right. So he said, but there are some people, he said, who actually think that if you think something that's wrong, that's not very important. But if you say something that's wrong, that's even more important. And if you do things that's wrong, that's even... But he said they're wrong, because actually, in God's eyes, they're all exactly the same, because they're all wrong. And God doesn't want for us to do wrong. And Luke said, oh, Uncle Pete, that is really, really cool. How did you do that? And his Uncle Pete said, rather well, I thought, with that, he got the bit of rope, and he tied it up into a little knot, and he popped it there onto the side, and it went into the back of the table. Then he turned around to Luke and said, Luke, I was hoping to be able to stay with you this weekend with you and your mum and dad, but I can't say that you again because I've got to go off and do some work. He said, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you borrow something of me, and it's something very, very, very important. And Luke said, what is it? And he said, it's inside the tin. Well, Luke went over to the tin again, and he took the lid off, and he had a look, and he said, there's nothing in here, Uncle Pete. He said, oh, dear, oh, dear. He said, I'll have to do it again. And he went, like that there, and he took the lid off, and in actual fact, inside there, there was a handkerchief. A green man. And, and, and Luke said, oh, what's that then? He said, well, he said, this in actual fact is a special magic handkerchief. And what happens is, if you think something that's wrong, a dirty mark will appear on it. If you say something that's wrong, a dirty mark will appear on it. If you do something that's wrong, dirty marks will appear on it. And what I'm going to do, Luke, I'm going to let you borrow the handkerchief for the week until I come back next weekend. And I want you to see, we're going to see how clean the handkerchief is when I come back. So Luke said, oh, cool, a magic handkerchief. Can I fly on it? He said, no, that's called a magic rock, magic carpet. He said, oh, okay, then fine. And he said, so I'm going to take care of this, right? Luke had a good look at it to make sure that the handkerchief was nice and clean. And then he took it and he popped it into his pocket. Now, as I said, Luke's Uncle Pete went off that weekend back to work. 
and uh, Luke put his handkerchief into his pocket. It was Monday, Luke is on his way to school. As he's making his way to school, he walks down the road, and on the other side, boys and girls, there was a boy called Reginald Higginbottom, which is a very, very strange name. But Luke didn't like Reginald Higginbottom, because Reginald Higginbottom thought he knew everything about everything, and Luke didn't like him very much. And so Luke looked across the road, and he thought to himself, I hope he doesn't come over and talk to me, because I don't like him. Just thought something that wasn't very nice. Wonder what's happened to the magic handkerchief? The boys and girls. He put his hand into his pocket and he took the handkerchief out. The boys and girls. Already there were dirty marks on the handkerchief of the bad thoughts that he had. And he thought, well, I've got a lot of the handkerchief there. So he got the dirty marks up and he rolled them all up and he put them inside the handkerchief. And he went on his way to school. Now, because everything happened that weekend, there was some Luke being around. Luke was being excited and everything else. He forgot to do his homework. Now, when the teacher said, Luke, where's your homework? Instead of Luke saying, I'm really sorry, miss, but I forgot to do it, which is telling the truth. It's always best to tell the truth. When the teacher said, Luke, where's your homework? Luke began to tell lies. This is what he said. He said, um, miss, I did do my homework. But on the way to school this morning, some of the boys from the high school saw me with my homework in my bag and they took my homework book out, miss, and, and, they, and they tore it up into pieces, miss, and they threw it in the puddle and they jumped up and down on top of it and that's why I haven't got my homework book, miss. The teacher said to Luke, Luke, are you telling me the truth? Because what Luke didn't realise is that teachers know when they're telling the truth while you're telling a lie, because that's why they're teachers. And, uh, and, and Luke said, uh, yes, miss, I am telling the truth, which was another lie. She said, hmm, we'll see about that. She carried on with the work in class. She turned around. Luke put his hand into his pocket because now, boys and girls, he had said something was wrong. He had to look at the handkerchief. And now, the handkerchief is getting quite dirty. But there was a little bit of clean stuff left, so he thought, well, I'll, I'll keep that and I'll hide it away. It was Friday, the end of the week. Luke is out playing football in the street. It was a very quiet street, so it was safe to play football there. Luke's team and the other team, they were drawing, they had one goal each. Luke had the football and he runs towards the goal, it got the goalie and the other team was called Jono. And as he ran towards Johnny, Jono, he kicked the ball as hard as he possibly could. It was a brilliant kick. It went straight between the two, well, coats that were the goal posts. And it went past Jono the goalie. But boys and girls, he kicked it too hard because it went over Mrs. Jones's hedge, across the top of her garden without even touching it, and it went smashed Tinkle Tinkle and broke the window of Mrs. Jones's house. Everybody ran indoors. Luke ran indoors as well. Sat in the front room and thought to himself, I'll pretend I was in here watching TV all night. So he was sat down watching the TV in the front room. It wasn't very long before there was a <laughs> on the front door. And, and Luke could hear Mrs. Jones and his mum talking together. Mrs. Jones and his mum came into the front room. His mum said to him, Luke, Luke pretended he didn't. Uh, Luke, he again pretended he didn't hear. Uh, Luke, I'm talking to you. Oh, sorry, Mum, sorry, Mum. I've been watching this TV program. It's really, really good, and I've been watching it all the time. She said, have you been playing football out in the street? No, Mum. Did you kick the ball, the ball through Mrs. Jones's window? No, and I didn't kick the ball through Mrs. Jones's window. She said, are you sure? Yeah. But of course, mums know, and dads know when we're telling lies as well, because that's why the mums and dads are. And she said, I'll speak to you later. But boys and girls, when they went out of the room, he put his hand into his pocket to see what had happened to the handkerchief. And what he thought was going to be a nice and clean handkerchief, by now, when in actual fact, a very, very dirty handkerchief. Well, that was the evening that Uncle, Uncle Luke's going to come back. Luke got his handkerchief popped into his pocket. His Uncle Pete, uh, Uncle Pete arrives and into the house he comes and he sits down beside Luke and he says, Hiya Luke, and Luke goes, Hiya Uncle Pete, how you been doing? Okay, how's it been through the week? Mm, I tried my best. Well, he did try his best, but he just got a bit wrong through the week. So he said, uh, how's the magic handkerchief? Luke said, um, magic handkerchief? Oh, I think I must have lost it. Another lie. And boys and girls, then his Uncle Pete said to him, uh, let's have a look in your pocket. He put his hands into his pocket and he said, no, there's nothing in there, look. No. And with that, boys and girls, what he did was he took the handkerchief out and he hid it in his hand and he put it behind his back. His Uncle Pete said, what about the other pocket? And he went, no, there's nothing in there either. What about behind your back, the other hand? You guess what he's going to do now. You've got to swap hands. No, it's not there either. What about the other hand? Um, no, no, it's not there either. 
and his Uncle Pete felt a bit of a smile coming over his face because he knew exactly what Luke was doing. So he said to him, bring both hands to the front. And Luke brought both hands to the front and he went, oh, oh Uncle Pete, it's all dirty. I didn't want it to be dirty, Uncle Pete. I wanted it to be nice and clean, but it just ended up becoming lots of... I, I thought things that were wrong and said things and did... Uncle Pete, can you please make the handkerchief clean again for me? And he said, yeah, he said, of course I can make the handkerchief clean for you because that's what I am, a magician. But he said, I can tell you something else. I can tell you how all those sad things that we do inside can be forgiven as well. Because that's the reason Jesus came, to die on a cross for the wrong things that we've done. And if we say to him that we're sorry for those things, he'll forgive us and make our lives nice and clean again. And he says, is that true? And he says, yes, of course it's true. That's the reason he came, so that we could be forgiven and we put our trust in him. But he said, give me the handkerchief. He gave him the handkerchief. Wait, one, two, three. And he pulled it like that there. And boys and girls, the handkerchief was all nice and clean once again. And he got the handkerchief. He rolled it up into a little ball. And he took it. And he popped it back into that funny little tin thing again. He popped it in there like that. He got the lid and put it on top there like that. And he went... Do you know what, Luke? He said, what? He said, because what happens to it as well? When we ask Jesus to forgive us, not only does he remove them, but he actually takes them away. He makes it just as if they've never even been there. Well, Luke was very, very pleased with that. And he learned a lesson about how Jesus came to die on a cross so that we could be forgiven if we put our trust in him. Do you think wrong, boys and girls? We need to ask Jesus to forgive us, and he will. Listen really, really well. I think it would be great to finish off this bit in the assembly with a prayer. So let's quietly put our hands up the door. And we'll close our eyes. And I'll say a prayer, and you listen to me as I say the prayer, and then at the end of it you can say Amen after me, okay? Well, let's play. Dear God, thank you very much for the tricks we're able to watch this morning. Some of us think you might know how some of them are done. But thank you, Lord Jesus, what you did on the cross wasn't a trick. You really did die on that cross and were punished for the wrong things that we've done so that we could be forgiven, so that you make us clean on the inside and the real us that we've got our trust in you. Be with us in school today. Would you help us today? to choose wisely and thank God that we're all special to you in Jesus name, Amen. Amen but before we finish just one second I have to do something very special here I'm going to get an invisible one of those activities and what I want you to do is get your hands up like that all put your hands up like that and I'm going to throw my invisible magic handkerchief up in the air and all of you can catch it so after three, one, two, three catch it now Pop the magic handkerchief in your pocket. And let's see if at the end of the day, that handkerchief is nice and clean because you haven't been thinking things that are sad, saying things, or doing things that are wrong. That'd be a cool thing.